Staff from Fort Suzu hospitals across the country gather to pray for the pandemic in India to come to an end. Two senior disciples of Dhamma Master Zhen Yan paved the way for the international disaster relief. 欢迎收睇大 headlines， 我系 Ruby 五，我哋一齐嚟睇下今日嘅内容。The pandemic in India keeps on raging. Staff from Fort Suzu hospitals. Including Huanan Suzi Medical Center, Taipei, Taichung, and Danian Suzi hospitals, pray devoutly to raise love and donation for India. Each pair of hands putting together conveys the most sincere blessings from the inner heart. To send love to India, everyone made a vow to hope this wave of pandemic to end soon. The pandemic in India is out of control, and the medical system collapses. Co-workers from Huanan Suzi Medical Center and Suzi Hospitals in Taipei, Taichung, and Danian, volunteers and members of the public prayed together sincerely. We really have two realizations. The first is that all sentient beings are equal. We have to go vegetarian. The second is that we should make money donation or contribute our efforts. Suzi volunteers around the world pray for them together. At the same time, we also have to contribute our love, gathering every piece to become a vast amount. The blessing ceremony is not only to pray for India but also for Taiwan, as the coronavirus has many mutants. People in Taiwan must be vigilant on epidemic prevention. Only a pious heart and kindness is the best vaccine. Such a vaccine can enable us to live in a disturbing world safely and peacefully. Together, love. Colleagues made donation to the bamboo tube one after another, contributing their parts for the pandemic. Although this is just a little amount, we hope to gather everyone's donation to help the places and people in need. Praying and gathering donation for India, it is hoped that the pandemic can be eased soon. The pandemic also spread quickly in Cambodia. Under the movement control order, the National Army Force has been assigned to assist in vaccination for the residents, while Suzy volunteers gathered anti-epidemic supplies to be sent to the vaccination stations. The capital of Cambodia was under movement control order, filling the streets with tension. Upon receiving the request from the local government, so the volunteers hurried to distribute anti-epidemic supplies to eight vaccination sites. The government announced that starting from May, the residents of the regions with higher COVID cases will be vaccinated first. Porsenche district official called us to say that eight regions will start vaccination, but they are lacking alcohol, medical supplies, and masks. After the largest outbreak in Cambodia in February this year and cluster infection in communities, the pandemic has spread rapidly. There is a shortage of epidemic prevention materials and medical personnel. Apart from having medical students served at the front line, the government has also sent army personnel to the hotspots of the pandemic to assist in vaccination. We also have received the materials provided by the government, but they are very limited and not enough. We really need more. Fortunately, there are companies and organizations to help us, especially Tsuji. They have brought us the medical supplies we are short of. It really reduces much of our burden. Boxes of supplies contain isolation guns, gloves, face shields, masks, and alcohol. Volunteers go to the front line with the supplies, together with the anti-epidemic personnel, to safeguard people's health. In Sabah, Malaysia, the enhanced movement control order is still in place to avoid cluster infections in communities. Students of the University of Malaysia Sabah are not allowed to leave the campus. So the volunteers were mobilized to buy food, aiding 200 students in need. Suji volunteers from Sabah went out to purchase food, as this was the first step to prepare supplies for the students of the University of Malaysia Sabah, UMS in short. Volunteers returned to Tsiji Kota Kinabulu branch in order to pack supplies into multiple bags.
As the pandemic situation elevated, the government ordered UMS to enforce the enhanced movement control order as students were prohibited to go out. Upon hearing the news, volunteers arrived with rice, instant noodles, eggs, cookies, and other supplies, aiding the students in need. School officials have enforced movement control order. Therefore, some students living outside of campus are facing food shortage, so we subsidize them with dry food. We gave food to the students living in 40 hostels, 20 in Kingfisher, while 20 in one Borneo, altogether aiding 200 students. Most students here are from Sabah, Peninsula, Malaysia, Sarawak, and Labuan. The other university here hosts 20 foreign students. Thus, the supplies this time may reduce the financial burdens for our students. These supplies may reduce our weekly expenses, and the supplies today can also save me a hundred ringgit. Volunteers also discuss with students about the importance of environmental protection and vegetarianism. Look at our weather, it's very hot. Why? Just don't complain about the hotness, but to think about the reasons why and what I can do to help. Why? What's the cost? What can I do? I told them there are about 7 billion people in the world, but 80 million animals are slaughtered each year. It's very serious as it causes climate change. If we stop killing animals, stop eating meat, we might have a chance of changing our current conditions. During the pandemic, Though helping each other is important, the issue of environmental awareness is also needed to be noticed. Under the pandemic, many people are facing financial difficulties. In Malaysia, there is a delivery man who rides his specially adapted scooter to deliver food. His spirit of not giving up during this difficult time has gained many people's respect. Nama saya Muhammad Siddiq bin Osman. Uh, umur saya 22 tahun, saya tinggal di Taman Melati Setapak, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, baru dapat. Nak pergi mana benda ni? Uh, saya kena pergi McDonald's di Gombak sebelah ni. Always with a smile on his face, Muhammad Sadiq Osman is a food delivery driver. He's 108 centimeters tall and makes deliveries in Kuala Lumpur's Gombak district each day. Sadiq tries to make money wherever he can during the pandemic. Despite his physical disadvantage, Sadiq's quite agile. He rides his modified scooter to make deliveries and has actually experienced much kindness on the job. I called my customer and said I wasn't able to make the delivery because I was involved in an accident. The customer said it was okay if it was delayed or even if I didn't deliver it. What surprised me the most is the customer came over to where I was and he wasn't there to pick up his purchase, but he came to take me to the hospital. Complications at birth stunted the development of Sadiq's lower body. When I was in school, I was made fun of. When you grow up, you still meet people who make fun of you. They'll express in their way that they don't like you. But if you want to continue living life, you need to keep positive. You only have one life and we need to face all the adversity with positive outlook. After his studies, Sadiq looked for jobs but was rejected at most. However, he continued looking. Currently, he's working as a customer service representative at a company. I think all the people who um, special, uh, have special skills must be given a chance to get employment. Lah. Because I understand that they, want, they have the will to work. Despite having a steady income, Sadiq still insists on the delivery job as a side business because he has a dream. I can gain experience in any type of job. 
and I also want to save money to start my own business to provide jobs for people who need it, while also helping small businesses with marketing. Sadiq is living his life to the fullest on his terms, walking his own unique path. In 55 years, Suzu Foundation has grown from an organization carrying out charity work locally to delivering global disaster relief. Two disciples of the Mama Zhen Yan have worked hard to pave the way. One aspires to be the master's feet, while the other vows to persevere with Suzu work. A 74-year-old volunteer is not considered old. Chou Yufen's jump has represented her active life in China. I have been to many cities in China. In 2014, I traveled to 17 cities in nine provinces in two months. In two months, I did not know how many thousands of kilometers I have traveled. I vowed to be the master's feet and travel around the world. The master has told me that in her lifetime, she probably will not leave Taiwan. Back then, I made a vow to myself. I like to take airplanes and I'm active since youth. Let me be your feet. Stephen Huang and Chou Yufen are senior city volunteers. One of them is based in the United States. While the other lives in China, because of their vows, they carry out such disaster relief missions. In the beginning, I listened to the master's cassette tape when she delivered a speech in Kaohsiung on the origin of Zizi. In fact, I have not met the master, but I vowed I would recruit 500 people for Zizi. Yes, but then I did not have the concept about 500 people. Of course, now I know it is a thousand hand, thousand eye Guan Yin Bodhisattva. When affinities come, they seize the opportunities. Suji's charity footprint has spread in 122 countries. It started when Master and three Christian nuns had a talk in 1966. Yangdao 共同一个方向来做好事。In 1965, the United States stopped its economic aid to Taiwan. In 1966, Taiwan established its first export processing zone and was promoting the expansion of the exports industry. In the same year, Buddhist Suji Foundation was established. In that year, the American gross domestic product was 93 times more than that of Taiwan. However, it is believed that people can nurture their kind thoughts and have a wealthy spiritual life. The master has never left Taiwan. How can she make an impact in so many countries? And in fact, she has given out signals of compassion and implemented compassionate aid. The master has made many decisions. I learned about them later on. When Wall Street Journal and Discovery interviewed me, they asked me what kind of person Dharma Master Zheng Yan is. She is an ordinary people. Of course, I answered in English. I said that she is an ordinary person. But somehow, what she did was extraordinary. We conducted three clinics in Subei to help cataract patients. In fact, those cataract patients are in their 70s or 80s. We performed surgeries on them. Some Tzuzi brothers and sisters thought that we should help people who are younger, for example, people in their 50s and 60s. We used a more practical view. Then, the master told us that even though they are elderly, you should help them undergo surgeries. Some of them have not been able to see for seven or ten years. They said that if they can see their family for one day, it is worth it. It is quite an inspiration for us. 
we were looking at things with a very practical view. The sutra paves a path and the principal point to a way. Zhiji path has been paved with faith, vows and actions. As people carry out actions, they have also realized these principles. Back then, I did not understand the master's decision. Running a hospital is so difficult, but she still insisted on building one. Then people opposed to building a university and medical school. I remember in that year, many people opposed to the idea. It is a whole the ITV, I said it would cost a lot. You must have persistence and courage to break through the difficulties. Was the master's vow? Ziji won't stop unless the land is purified. In the early days, we heard that the master has made such a vow. All right, we will accompany the master. The master even said that every morning as she wakes up, she hopes that people will not regret carrying out Ziji's work. For some time, people said that Ziji was not expanding in Shanghai fast enough. Then I called my son, who is a psychiatrist. I asked him, people said that Ziji is not doing well in Shanghai, and it is my problem, so I feel bad. My son said, let me ask you if Ziji is doing a good job in Shanghai. It is your credit? I said, it is not my credit, as the work is carried out by many people. If Tsuzi's success in Shanghai is not your credit, then its failure is not your fault. Of course, after listening that, I learned to let go. Then I told the master about it, and the master said that my son is smarter than me. Ziji's path is indeed a true path. In 2010, Ziji Foundation has become an NGO in special consultative status with ECOSOC. The United Nations hopes to learn from Ziji's shared experience around the world. Oh, City volunteers have taken on responsibilities that transcend boundaries. As city volunteer take steps forward, their love is the map on this road of principles. I think that no matter what happens to other people, even if there is only me left in Suzi one day, I will still persevere. I will start with myself and recruit another person. I think everyone must uphold such thoughts. In Mozambique, a total of 500 people participate in prostrating pilgrimage. Although they are in Africa, they have a deep understanding of Buddhism. To them, a prostrating pilgrimage is not just a religious ritual, but an inner dialogue that firms up their belief through action. In Metosila, the people are barefoot in the coin fields, reverently participating in a prostrating pilgrimage. In other place, Namatanta volunteers overcame the six-hour time differences in order to watch the sutra adaptation performed in Taiwan. The volunteers slept outside the office on the plastic pallet the night before. In order to participate in pilgrimage, we slept outdoors last night. It was cold and hard, but everything was worth it because the Master's education and Buddhist teachings can lead us and our families to change our lives. 
find tears from Maputo, set up a shelter next to the mango trees to get closer to the earth. The great lesson taught by the master, Buddhism is like a medicinal herb that can heal the mind, but it is only helpful if we are willing to take it. Due to the pandemic in India, that is now out of control, they are sending cross-border blessings. Pray that the Buddha will take care of India, take care of each of them, protect this country and bless their people to find hope. Participating in a pilgrimage, many are reminded the voice from the heart to help others. Suzy Frontiers also hosts a prostrating pilgrimage all over Taiwan. In Kino, some participants are seniors of over 90 years old, while there is also a small child under five. Yet, everyone recited Buddhist Sutra piously and found their inner peace. With the solemn sound of Buddha Sutra, these people were moving forward in order. To celebrate Suzi's 55th anniversary, a prostrating pilgrimage was held in Kinong Jinxi Hall. Some even had to use a crutch, but still light up in a pilgrimage crowd. 91-year-old recycling frontier Lin Yueli injured her right thigh in a car accident a few years ago, yet she still joined the pilgrimage sincerely. The Buddha gave me this opportunity to join the pilgrimage today, so I immediately came here. Since I'm old, there won't be many chances for me to join. I'm very happy to participate. People need to stand every three steps to purify their mind. This pair of good friends once felt disappointed at work. Through this prostrating pilgrimage, they could also have a chance to purify their mind. I try to settle my feelings and didn't think too much. I just focus on the process of prostrating pilgrimage. I want to experience this different feeling. After the prostrating pilgrimage, I could achieve meditation and purify my mind. Through this process, all the bad things or bad emotions I encountered at work can be cleared at once. Liu Ziyu, who is under five years old, came with her grandmother. Although she didn't understand the true meaning of prostrating pilgrimage, the seed of kindness has already been sprouted in her little mind. When I woke up in the morning and prepared to go out, she got up too. I didn't even wake her up, she just wanted to follow me to wherever I go. With determination, the prostrating pilgrimage team went forward firmly, just like Suzy's footsteps in doing good for 55 years. In Taipei, 400 people gathered in the community to mark the Buddhist day, as well as prayed for the end of the pandemic. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and see you next time.